Howdy, howdy, howdy. We're talking PAT preparation and we're talking part A. And part A is all about your basic operations, yet we're using whole numbers and decimal numbers. So quick little refresher on that. We're on Classroom and of course, I'm not gonna waste my time going to the stream because look at this mess. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna go to Classwork. Boom. I'm, gonna go to, I'm going to go to the tippity top, PAT practice, click on it. I'll view instructions. And holy smokes, look at all this stuff. Don't feel overwhelmed, however. These are all a whole bunch of different practice tests and their answer keys. So don't feel like you have to do this all at once. You don't. We're going to do these one at a time. Um, and we'll use those answer keys to mark and more importantly, correct our work so we can see where we're making mistakes. And you know, wherever you're making those mistakes, that's going to guide where you're studying. So let's say you're really struggling with subtraction. Boom, spend your time studying subtraction. Um, and that's why we assess ourselves. That's why we use these answer keys to see where we're lacking, where we're strong, and that guides our study. Anyway, let's go through, uh, I hope this is number one. And I have to I have to apologize. I'm not sure why this got all mixed up. Um, you kind of have to hover over it. And when you do, notice how the, the, full, the full title comes up. Sorry about that. Anyhow, okay, this is number four. Who cares? That's okay. Um, so what you're essentially you're doing here is you're answering all these different operations. And this is how your PAT is likely going to work. Notice each of these number sentences that are written horizontally. And I mean, you, you can solve them that way, but likely you're going to be doing it mentally. And that's kind of a recipe for success. You know, I, I'm a math teacher. I do this math every single year. But, you know, even as a math teacher, I would likely get these wrong if I tried doing them horizontally. So the very first order of business for doing any of these is this rewriting the number sentence. So, you know what, I'm gonna skip down to a tougher one. Let's go to this one right here. Cool. I am going to rewrite it. 38 and 4 tenths multiplied with five. Cool, I've written it vertically. So remember, whenever we're doing these decimal multiplication questions, the first thing you gotta do is you bounce out that decimal. Now we're pretending it's 384. And then we just multiply like normal. Five times four, four is 20. And you bet you I'll carry that too. Five times eight is 40 plus two is 42. And you bet I'll carry that four. Five times three is 15 plus four is 19. Cool. And my answer is 1,920. No, it is not. That is wrong, Lewis. You have to remember, guys, when we bounce out that decimal, we have to bounce it back in. So I only bounce it here once. Yeah, I'll bounce it back. So my answer is actually 192. And that makes sense because if I were to estimate this, which you know you don't have to do here, but it's kind of nice to do an estimate. That way you can see if your answer is going to be close to correct or not. Uh, I'll round 38 and 4 tenths to the nearest whole number, and that would be 38, right? The 4 doesn't make this round up. Okay, so 38 times 5. And heck, you know what? That's, even that's too hard. I'm just going to round it up to 40. Easy. Close enough. What's 40 times 5? Well, 5 times 4 is 20 but with a zero on the end is 200, cool. So my estimated value is 200. That's pretty darn close to 192. Okay, so there we go. Uh, moving on, so there's the multiplication for you and notice again, I wrote it vertically. I wanna do that with almost all the other operations. Let's do, let's do this one. There's three terms in this addition one. So that can be kind of tricky. Again, we're writing them vertically. And with all subtraction and addition, it's really, really important we align our place values. So notice I've got my ones lined up here. So one plus 187 thousandths plus two in 513 thousandths. If you're kind of wondering like, oh geez, at these decimal numbers, it's sometimes kind of tricky to align your place values. My trick that I, I like to use that helps me is I line up the decimals. Now you might be thinking, well, wait, there's no decimal next to the one. Well, actually there is. All whole numbers, if I wrote 7 or 22 or whatever, I could also just write a decimal with a zero next to it. I could. We often don't because that's redundant. That's more work. And I don't want to work hard. I want to work smart. Okay. I could write a million zeros, right? Because there's a million place values to the right. There's infinite place values to the right. But anyway, just so we can have a good look here, I'm going to write that decimal and check it out. They're all aligned, mostly. Kind of wiggly. Sorry. And I'll put in some placeholders too, just for fun. So I've got my thousands lined up, my hundreds lined up, my tens lined up, and my ones lined up. Perfect, I am ready to crush this. Zero plus seven, seven, seven plus three is 10. I will carry the one. 
1 plus 8 is 9, plus 1 is 10. And I'll carry that one. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 5 is 7. And you are probably screaming at your screen, Lewis, you forgot to drop your decimal. And I'm, I'm really sorry. I did. That should have happened first. Pardon me. 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. And check it out. My answer is 3 and 700 th thousandths. Or I could rewrite that as 3 and 7 tenths. Of course, those are equivalent. The extra zeros to the right of the decimal are redundant. We don't need them. But you can put them in there if you want. Okay, beauty. Moving on. We've covered multiplication. We've covered addition. Let us go to subtraction. Why not? So here it is right here. I don't like that it's ver uh, horizontal. I got to write this bad boy vertically. Don't forget to write your operation because if you do, sometimes you'll end up adding when you should be, should be subtracting or multiplying when you should be subtracting. Write your operation. Again, I'm aligning the decimals to make sure my place values are aligned. Beautiful. Ones are aligned. Tenths are aligned. Cool. Okay, now remember, your top number has to be bigger than the bottom number. If it isn't, yep, we're borrowing. Cool. 12 take away 5 is 7. Oh, geez, I'm not going to forget this time. Drop the decimal, Lewis. There we go. 12 take away 5 is 7. 0 take away 9. Well, I can't do that. Got to borrow. 10 take away 9, yep, that's 1, and 1 take away nothing is 1. So my answer for this one is 11 and 7 tenths. I could say 70 hundredths if I wanted to. I could say 700 thousandths if I wanted to. It's all the same. It's all equivalent. Very good. Okay, last question. We're going to go to the division. Now, this one we won't write in vertically. I mean, we could. We could make it look like a fraction because this is just division, right? Fractions are just division. But again, this doesn't really help us solve it, um, at least as easily as turning it into a long division question would. So this is how you will rewrite your division questions. Remember that first term is always your dividend. That's the number being divided, being split up, and it goes inside your long division um, bracket here. The second term, that is your divisor. Okay, so you always got to write that on the outside. If you flip-flop these numbers, your answer will be wrong. So it's important to remember that distinction. Now, before I go through it, you're probably screaming at the screen right now. Thank you for the reminder. I, of course, will not forget to write DMSB, divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down, because that is going to guide my division. Now, let's go through this. Does 2 fit into 1? No, it doesn't. It fits into it, rather, 0 times. Cool. Okay. Does 2 fit into 13? Yeah, you bet it does. It fits into it 6 times. Okay, and I'm going to write my decimal right on top, right there, align them so they're close together, so our place values are all good. Anyway, 2 fit divided into 13 six times, so that's my divide step. Now let's multiply. 2 times 6 is 12. Next step is subtract. 13 take away 12 is 1. Next step is bring down. I will bring down the other 1. And that will make a really bad looking arrow. Sorry about that. Okay, and then we go all the way back to the, the divide. Does 2 divide into 11? You betcha it does. It fits into it 5 times. 2 times 5 is 10. Let me subtract. The difference there is 1. And uh-oh, we're not doing remainders anymore. So we add a place value. Because there's infinite zeros to the right. There's infinite place values to the right. And I'll bring down one of those zeros. Making this 10. Does 2 fit into 10? Yes, it does. It fits into it 5 times. 2 times 5 is 10. And we subtract it. And it's 0. And we have our final answer. So 2 divides into 13 and 1 tenth, 6 and 55 hundredths times. Kind of cool. So there you have it. This is how you should be completing these questions. We'll rewrite them. We'll put them in a position so it's easier for us to succeed and have a better chance of getting these absolutely correct. Now, one more thing I will say. Remember, you have 30 minutes to write these questions, which seems like a lot of time, but it kind of isn't. There's 15 questions in, these, in this uh, Part A test which means you only have two minutes per question. However, let's just say for whatever reason, you're doing a really good job, probably because you studied so hard and you know your stuff, you end up with eight minutes left over. You've got eight minutes extra time. So rather than just saying, yeah, I'm done, handing it in, you're going to use those eight minutes and you're going to check your work. No, you won't use a calculator. What you're going to use is inverse operations. So we've covered this, but just as a refresher, the opposite of multiplication is division. The opposite of addition is subtraction. 
So we can flip around a number sentence, use the opposite operation, and see if we end up with that third number. So for example, we just said that 13 and 1 10th divided by 2 is 6 and 55 hundredths. That's division. Well, let's use the inverse, the opposite. Let's do some multiplication. So if I go 2 times 6 and 55 hundredths, it better equal this. And if it doesn't, uh oh, something's wrong. And that tells me I better try this division again so that I get this question right. So enough talk. 6 and 55 hundredths times 2. Okay, we're multiplying. Let's bounce out that decimal. Once, twice. Sorry, I should use a different color. Once, twice. There we go. Cool. So now I'm just pretending it's 2 times 655. 2 times 5 is 10. And I'll carry that one. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1 is 11. And I'll carry that one. 2 times 6 is 12 plus 1 is 13. Cool. My answer is 1,310. Uh-oh. Forgot to do the most important thing, and that is bounce back that decimal twice. And I'm bouncing it twice because I bounced it twice at the very beginning. Okay. Does this equal my answer? It does. I just use inverse operations to double check my answer. I use that extra time I had remaining just to double check that I got these all right. Because to me, you end up with eight minutes left over and you just hand it in without checking your work. And let's say you end up with like 14 out of 15. Oh man, what a wasted opportunity. You could have had 15 out of 15. Or you could have you know, double checked your answers and made sure you did as well as you possibly could and really possibly should. You know this stuff. So use the time you have. Use that whole 30 minutes. Don't rush it. Don't rush it. Anyway, have fun doing this. Have fun practicing and studying and getting good at this. See you later.